you just felt you were going to see the inside of a hotel room for two days. So I would always get my shoes on and go and just run through a city in in that breakfast hour when it's actually non-threatening. You can see stuff, you can learn about stuff. So I began, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not addicted in some ways to the to the desire to. It wasn't about keeping fit as much as just getting out and getting fresh air. I've always wanted to be outside, and I, I think the other thing that's kind of uh, deep in me is, you know, I gr grew up in suburbia, and my dad was just obsessed by knowledge of wildlife, and that, you know, I think you're really blessed if you've got parents or a, a mentor or someone. It would be absurd in our garden not to know the difference between a jackdaw or a, cr a crow or a great tear or a cold tear. It just it just wouldn't be seen as normal. <laughs> yeah. So so for me, those two things. Well, as soon as I, I've always wanted to live in the countryside, never wanted to live permanently in, in, in the city. So as soon as I got a chance to come and, and and come back to the UK, I came here to the Chilterns and started, you know, basically getting my shoes on and getting the distance done. And uh, uh, did did you find that the sort of the running in Connecticut did that basically prepare you for what was ahead of you in the children's? Um, I'm quite a soppy Brit, and, <laughs> and and there is something, you know, I loved running in America. I loved the enormity of it, and without being funny, I've run all over the world. I've run uh, a couple of desert marathons. I've run on the North Pole. He says I've run up. There is, well, I'm sure we'll talk about it. There is something about this place in terms of the landscape, the way it feels, the, the closeness to it, the connection that is just, you know, frankly, I was really glad to be home. I mean, I love, <laughs> I love the US. I have an amazing life, but mm. I am, I'm deeply, it's just infused in me, this, this landscape and what it is. It, it's, it's, it's what I am. So I, I, I've always felt, um, a connection with the the UK landscape. I mean, as a kid, I always went to the Lake District, to other places. Frankly, I didn't know the Chilterns that well. The, the, the gem that is this place not far from London. Um, so that was just, I mean, I was like a, a, an, it was an incredible experience to come and move here 15 years ago and see it all in front of me. It's quite interesting. I mean, Chilterns aren't really a holiday destination, are they really? Um, you've got Lake District, you've got Exmoor, Dartmoor, Scotland, uh, Wales, etc. Chilterns is not most people's idea of a fantastic holiday, but actually there are so many things you can do in the Chilterns. And I think as we, you know, uh, during lockdown, I think a lot of people locally here have started to appreciate some of the, the landscape and the opportunities they've had. And uh, my guess is that the reason why you moved to this part of the world was because of the Chilterns and and what he could offer is that right no, that is right and I think there's it's a funny thing in life you, and you can't be too judgmental about it because everyone has their own here but deep in me was you know I, I'm a suburban boy who wanted to move to the real countryside <laughs> but I'm also I mean I'm also going to London so it's a real balance there is something about this place I mean this morning I went out and I only ran two and a half three miles like a short little short run because I was starting early within Half a mile, if you go up the lane here, I'm in Rotherfield Peppard, you go up the lane here, you're in a, you feel like you're in country, countryside. Mm. I mean, proper deep woodland. The, proper countryside always have an element of fear about it, I think. It's got a <laughs> smidgen of fear. Do you know what I mean? Like you're just, yeah. you feel yourself slightly alone. In, and, and I think it's a wonderful thing. It's a thrill. But... I felt that this morning within five minutes of leaving my door. That is rare and it's a real privilege. And the landscape here can, we can no doubt talk about it, but the, the way the land is shaped here allows you just to disappear into places quite quickly. And I, I think that is, it's a little, it, it, is, it is something that is very, very precious, I think. It, it sounds like not only a physical thing, but also a mental thing. Is that right, Tim? Yeah, we'll talk we, we, again. It's something to get. I mean, I I'm in a job that is uh, got enormous stress around it, and I'm surrounded by. I mean, uh, uh, you know, enormous amounts of advice around keeping calm, setting things in perspective, and and it's interesting if you go to the US now. There's bookshelves laden with resilience for executives, training uh, your mind for strength, different exercise. I mean, it's a massive burgeoning industry, the whole health and wellness and it's clearly something that needs attention. 
and, I, and again, I don't, my, one size does not fit all, but I probably come from a more, get a cagoul, a very British mindset, get a cagoul on, get a decent pair of shoes on, go out into the elements, and your most, most things in life will be set in perspective. I mean, I've been in tough situations, I suppose, at work where I, mean, I remember when I was acting director general running the whole BBC for six months during, during a, a really horrendous crisis. And um, I was going to be interviewed on News Not by, by Jeremy Paxman and it wasn't going to be pleasant, yeah? And I, I, I actually remember sitting on the end, end of this um, uh, 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 kind of sofa, I can see it now. And I just thought, whatever happens, the Ridgeway will still be there. I'll still be running. No one can take that. I'll be running on that path. And, and I actually think that is the secret to re resilience. It's really, really setting yourself in perspective. I don't think you can take yourself too important. You can't take yourself too seriously as well. Yeah. You, you set yourself in a landscape and you set yourself in longer time periods. It's incredibly important, for I think, for us. I suspect that that is the feeling of most commuters as they come out of London on a Friday night, <laughs> out, out into the green belt, out into the, the, the suburbs, etc. Um, tell us a bit about your running. I mean, sort of, OK, you came over here, you, you, you've done a few runs, a bit, I mean, two or three miles, but you then started to run with a purpose. I mean, a lot of miles here. Yes, yeah, so I, I mean, I've been running marathons and, and, and going on tarmac and I, I'm not a big tarmac runner. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I, I want to disappear into the hills. And I, I was kind of, what happened was like many people on probably on this, on this call, you get your, you get your regular runs or your regular walks. So, you know, and you go, okay, there's one of my, and I had about probably 12, runs that I'd go in on a regular basis and they were lovely and beautiful but I just thought one is I've got a lot at work I'm not going to disappear my midlife crisis is not going to be disappearing for th three months yeah <laughs> uh, and disappearing around India I'm going to have to find I want something local and I was looking at this map the 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 which is right beside me showing me which is the the 171 the, the audience so I love audience survey maps I love good I, I just they are a work of art and it reminds me of my old geography teaching and everything. I mean, I've always loved those maps and I've relied on them. And I looked at the map and I, I just had this moment. I said, what if I ran every footpath on the map? That was it. That was it. Okay. And what if I run every footpath on the map? And um, I started working out. And if you grid the map, and this is very interesting for, I mean, if, if you want to know the wonders of the UK and foot, open access footpaths, this Ordnance Survey map has, is 594 square kilometres. Only 17 kilometres don't have footpath going across. If you take the squares, so this is how detailed it gets, only 17 of those squares <laughs> don't have footpath in them. But that's amazing, isn't it? That is an amazing, amazing thing about the children's, the accessibility of our countryside, that, you know, a member of anyone, a member of the public like myself can go, you know, 90x percent of that map is accessible uh, through footpaths. So, uh, so I just thought, okay, um, why don't I give this a go? And I started running and marking off. So, I mean, I don't know if this is going to work on Zoom, but you can probably see this is my map. Can, can you see that? Yes. Can you see that, everyone? Yeah. So, so, so this is one seven one. All right, and you can see. Sorry, this doesn't really work on Zoom. I should have probably. But you can see this map, yeah? Yeah. This is a labour of love. This is a, this is something I I don't want to lose. And you can see, if I put it up to the camera, that I would go out, I would come back, I would record everything I'd seen, I'd highlight the run, and then if I've completed the square, I'd give it that blue square. Yes. <laughs> so if you think I got quite obsessive, you're right. All right. And 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 I started that. I started slowly working my way through this area to the very depths of it knocking off every footpath we're going to, we're going to come to how you did that in a moment this is my map this is number 24 it's not 171 it's a slightly different it's children walkers Lovely. map so not yeah. obviously not runners map it's a walkers map and i have marked off a very small section of it down here where where I've walked, but it's not it's not a very big section. So it's a um, it's a feeble attempt. But I, I've just done stuff in my, my local area. But 
you gridded up this map. Where did you start? Did you sort of say, oh, I'll start you know, top left? You know, no, I mean, I, I, because I wanted cool. to mix it up. And what I, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to find fresh experiences close to me. Do you know, because I think it's so fascinating. We can go through some of the things that there was so going through that experience, there was so much a range of emotions and I knew my 12 runs backwards. So this for that you need something. I mean, I hope this inspires other people. You need something to force you to get out of your comfort zone. And that's the wonders yeah. of this map because you can trust it. So, so all in all, just so it, it now the other, there are a number of rules to this challenge, by the way. <laughs> so, so, so if you think it, it's all slightly strange, I've probably got the rules somewhere. Let me just grab them. All right. I've got my paperwork here. So, so the, the, there was, there are certain rules to this challenge. One was no digital. The only digital technology you're allowed, by the way, is if you're truly lost in the middle of nowhere and you, you need to find yourself. But I didn't use any Strava, okay. any tracking, any pacing, because it was just, it just caused too much stress. I wanted to just relax into the landscape. So, and I found that, I mean, I do do a lot of timed runs and stressed marathon timed and, you know, and I'm hyper competitive in that way, but I just wanted to free myself of that. And, and then I just said, right, I've got to run everything. I've got to do every path. I've got to record every kite, but don't ask me why, but I decided I'd record every sighting of a red kite and every other sighting of wildlife that I saw, but I was counting red kites specifically. Mm. And away I went, that was it. And it, it, and it was just, just to give it a perspective, it took two years of weekend, 143 runs. Mm. Um, I think based on my, and it's, 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 it wasn't digital, so it's just on the old fashioned rulers about 750 miles of footpath it probably took about 1500 miles of running and um yeah that was kind of what happened now now you didn't just run did you i mean you observed the wildlife you recorded it i mean you you, you, you i mean this talk is a bit a bit about basically yeah. running and the children's but it's also about wildlife and the things you encompassed as part of this tim tell us tell us a bit about the wildlife you you came across well, I, I, I saw quite a lot. I mean, I, th I think, if I'm honest, running is okay at that. It's not, I mean, if, if you observe, I mean, there'll be, I think, I, I, I want to do it again, but slowly, slower, and I think I'll see more. <laughs> but um, I, I think, look, there's there's lots of highlights that I saw. I mean, I think that the, on the, on the, on the red kite, by the way, you do, that is the mascot of this area. And that's the bird that's sitting with you, adjusting itself, in all, mod, in all modes, I saw it in every angle, every every type of light, every height, not quite noisy. Every, and I'd be, the one thing I would say, by the way, is I never worked it out. You can ne that's the wonders. That I don't know if you've read the Ages for Hawk book, but there's something at like the distance about an animal like that. You never quite work it out. So I could never call exactly what it was. I could begin to get themes but I never exactly worked it out but I saw um 770 kite sightings I'm sure there's dupli duplicates in there because I was going so so I saw a lot of kites a good a good chunk of the UK pop <laughs> population I, I always think if you don't run fast enough one of them would get you but I mean sort of that's 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 my because they are they're big birds I mean they are and they're just awesome I mean the way they use the thermals from the Chilton Hills and, and glide um, uh, wheeling around to spot prey extension. They're pretty, um, and uh, they well, they're amazing. I mean, I think, the, I think the obvious things, and this, this crowd will know more than uh, any and, and understand it, so I, I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, but the, the, the ability for, I mean, I think one of the most majestic sights is seeing a kite in high wind, mm -hmm. and you can just, the, 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 in, the infinite number of adjustments to that machine as it go you know a natural machine as it can find its its level and its place in this uh, there's a particular hill i know um uh, up near ibsen where you go up and the kites just hit on the, just sit on the top there and they and you can just see them the the, the minute adjustment i find absolutely thrilling um so yeah that was that i mean i think uh, i saw a lot of things i'm obviously a, a lot of deer if you if you go on 140 runs you'd probably see deer about 35 times by the way the data is all there the, the thing i like most by the way is seeing a hare 
I only saw hares three times, mostly mostly up north. Okay, that they're it, pretty rare, aren't they? Yeah, and up up up. up um, basically, if you go to, I mean, the, the map's got various areas to it. So if you went up to the um, Little Milton and those who know that area, Stoke Talmage, you're probably like it's a bit flatter up there. I called it the Badlands because it was a bit <laughs> like my personal Mordor. Because as walkers, we all know that you can quickly sense if a landowner is not welcoming to walkers, can't mm. you? You can smell it straight away. There's, there's, there might be a padlock there. There might be styles not right. Now, remember, I had to do every path. So, you know, the, the kind of thing I remember wrapping my jacket around my legs so that I could get through paths that were largely invisible. I remember sprinting through a keep out area, you know, just because I just got obsessed with if it wasn't, if it's not a life threatening situation, you had to get the path done. That was the rule. That was the rule. But up, up in that northern kind of north west corner, if you want to see, you know, hares, that's where to go. There's a, on those open fields, you can see them. Um, I, th I think there's also uh, lovely patches in this area where you get to see a lot of butterflies, by the way. There's, you know, marble white. I mean, I saw some really, some amazing fields of butterflies. I think we're very, very blessed. I recorded quite a lot of those. Um, mammals to a point, I mean, see some fox, but I wasn't running at night where I think you probably would get mm. badgers. Um, I've seen barn owls, I've seen, I mean, new, I mean, if we go into the bird life, it's, it's vast in terms of, as you can imagine. Um, but basically a lot, a lot. And, and, and I think, um, uh, of course, you've also got to deal with quite a lot of marauding bullocks and various other animals. So if that was the fear <laughs> factor, right? It was like, uh, you know, a, a Spanish holiday, bull, a, bull, a bull holiday, bull running with the bulls a couple of times. So I've, I've had some adventures as well. Now you mentioned that, I mean, there are obviously parts of the environment would be positive, you know, you're, you're feeling that running through some of the paths would really positively enhance your experience. There must have been times where the experience wasn't such so good, really, Tim. Tell us a bit about that. No, I, I think that you've got all of life out there. So, I mean, if I read the entries and, and I've got a little book here where I um you can see I would write up, you can see that there, I'd write up all my yeah. notes, yeah? So I've got all my 140 runs there <laughs> waiting to be written up when I finally get out of um, a, a, a busy day job. And in those notes, it's really interesting, your mood, you, you, uh, uh, how your mood develops is interesting through the descriptions. And you're so right, there, are run, there, there were runs where it was really quite tough in terms of just getting through I didn't mind actually, in, in, if you're running, it's that real boggy lack of navigation. You can't find the path. There's barbed wire everywhere in terms of a field. And you're in real, you just, you're kind of slightly exposed. You don't know whether a landowner is going to have some views to share. <laughs> that was a minority. If you want to be enthused about it, most of it was actually a wonderful thing to do. It was the highlight of my week. It was escape. It truly was an escape. And come rain or shine, what's wonderful about the British weather, and that's, <laughs> we have our moments um, coming out of the winter, but the, the, the variance of colour of seasons is truly wonderful in my, I mean, you know, if you look at it, you do get those incredible uh, different patterns and landscapes. So that, there was, the one thing I say is you never, ever get bored. You, you you're, never, you're, ever get bored. Now you're, running you're covering all these squares etc took how long i mean it must have been it's about two, it was it was it was just it was just over two years i mean i was doing during that period i did you know i was traveling around the world as well uh, at the time actually um i was running the bbc's international businesses so around the world so in amongst my diary entries are runs in delhi and manhattan and but it was, I was always being called back to the Chilterns uh, and, and, and that's, that's where it was. And I, I think um, it, it, it was mainly weekends, I say 143 runs. So you're basically once a week, at least once a weekend. And it was just mm -hmm. under two years. So yeah, you had to keep it going. And did you get to a, did you get to a place, you know, say after a year or a year and a half, I thought, oh goodness me, you know, I don't, I don't know, am I going to really finish this? You know, actually, I would like to just go back and run some of the ones I really enjoy, you know, not do the new ones. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I, I tell you that one of the points was when I missed 300 metres off the edge of a map, 
and I worked out it was a 30 mile round trip, <laughs> which is probably not good for my carbon footprint to this group either. But I, I, I tied it into something else, but I did go out, get out of the car, do the 300 meters. Um, so there was, I, I would be lying if there was little points where I thought about two thirds of the way through, I go, what am I doing here? This is kind of mad. But mm. now I look back on it and I'm sitting at the moment in, in the middle of the map, yeah, now. And I, it's a really, I, I think if there's something wonderful about really knowing your landscape. And I, and, and, and I think I, I kind of sense the bend of the Thames down there, the badlands as I, as I call them up there, the, the, the escarpments up there, the ridgeway that I can, you can, you can sense it. And, and that is really, that, that is something quite deep. <laughs> Having said that, I think what, if I was doing something now and I'm always looking for new challenges and the other, I do something, think there's also something about repeating the same walk many, many, many times. I mean, I love Baker's book, The Peregrine, where he just goes out, I don't know whether you know it from the 1930s, and that obsessive yeah. just going to the same place watching the peregrines. And, and I think almost part of me now just says, okay, I'm just gonna, I have one or two runs where I just go time and just, because you really begin to know something and deeply so i think you know there's balances to it and i see i think you you see different nuances and you you, you know and, and certainly different seasons you'll see different um uh, wildlife and uh, and and flowers and uh, and all sorts of things um i i was going to ask that, that, that there must have been come a time where you're getting near the end and you thought oh i've got to savor some of these last few runs i mean how did how did getting near that end feel tim um it, it felt pretty emotional in the end and actually it would become so much part of my life weird and that's a weird thing but it was very very i didn't realize how much it, my life it was because it gave it shape i i as, as it may not surprise you i'm quite gold or <laughs> quite gold driven so <laughs> it, it, it gave me something to do in terms of every weekend i would go and say right i've got my work to do i've got it would give me a purpose to go out there Find that, and the other thing it did was it forced me out. So if you're a little bit, the one thing about something like this or setting yourself some kind of goal, and it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, I, I, I run an organization out of 20,000 people. I'm very conscious that you don't have to run extreme. I mean, I love ultra running and I love, you don't have to do that. I mean, I've run the Ridgeway, I've done all that. You don't have to do that. Just walk three or four, but setting yourself a, a goal or th there's, a, there's a few entries in the book where I go, just I had to really drag myself out this morning but I have I I don't think there's a situation having run most weeks for 20 years I don't I can't think of one situation where I've regretted a run I ever. always think the, the one thing you're not looking forward to uh, end up being the best experiences uh, out I mean, I mean I, I, yeah and, and it might be that People on this this don't want to run more than ten meters, but you might say, "I want to see the ten best view. I want to find the ten best views." I can give you some suggestions, but that 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 that. But I want to see them at dawn, and I want to go there with a thermos and just sit and watch the sun come up or go down. On the we have in the Chilterns, by the way, some of the best views in the UK. There are a couple of valley views, in my view, that are. Uh, uh, utterly stunning um, and I've got one here seven and a half miles away yeah, yeah it's near Pissil you go up near you know all of up there basically and there's a tree I can sit and a bench and I put a thermos in and I ride seven and a half miles out I sit and have a cup of coffee and I just look at the view and stop myself for about 10 minutes then I run back yeah and and so you, anyone here can say, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to find something because I just think sometimes you need, you need that kick. I mean, I certainly do need a little bit of something to get me going in, in runners in the more serious running world. I sign myself up for some stupid event and find myself having to train for it going, what the hell am I doing? But when I cross the finish line, I always go, that was fantastic. Now, um, there's been some chat about equipment and things, running shoes, various other things. I mean, anything out of the ordinary, Tim? I mean, was it just yeah, a pair of trainers? Not, and... uh, not really. I think, I mean, I went up, you know, being flippant about it, when I, I'm, I'm more from the fell runners mindset, which is if you've got an injury, there's a, there's a treatment called core. 
which is carry on regardless, which I know is against all medical advice, but hard, you know, treat, listen to your body. I've, I've had every injury under the book, Achilles, strains. And the reason I'm going there is because I think you need to be comfortable in equipment. You need to be smart. You need to be, look, um, I've done a few mountain marathons. I've seen some of the serious guys do this. I think it's really straightforward. I, I don't think you need to overthink all this. And I think there's almost too much about kit and energy bars and goodness. I mean, uh, Josh Naylor, the greatest ever fell runner, said, I just, you know, any old shoes and a Kendall, a, a good Kendall mint cake and I'm away. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he was faster than I'll ever be. So I think there's something about just getting on with it. But I think new technology now is so wonderful. You know, in a little pack, you can you can carry a good, you know, your windproof. It's the obvious stuff, making sure you're not cold. You know, I wear the beanie and I'm out there and, and doing it. And a little pair of binoculars as well is well, well, well worth having. And then I think, you know, the, the obvious, the, 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 the shoes are critical. You need, you need, need off-road shoes if you're going to run. If you're going to be in the Chilterns, you need proper serious shoes. Um, but I don't think there's any rocket science here. I wouldn't overthink it. I think if you're comfortable and you've got room in the shoes and you're fine, I mean, I wouldn't be the person to go for a particular make or whatever I've been through. Loads. Anybody can do it. I mean, um, you talked about the wildlife you saw, the, the, the landscape various. I think you must have met quite a few different people, range of activities that were going on while you were doing this. Yeah, a lot of different things. Um, yes, most incredibly friendly. And, and but, but, oh, by the way, one of the things is you don't meet that many people really interestingly no i'm not being flippant yeah. what this group will know as well is it's fascinating how many people are within half a mile of a car park go a mile or two miles and you lit i mean there are days when i've, I've there's there's a lot of entries in this book it's surprising because i looked at it again knowing i was doing this there are so many runs where i go i haven't met anyone for five miles and i'm 45 50 miles from london I haven't met anyone for five miles. No, no one. And I'm kind of in a, I'm in little veils or little creases in the land. And so, so actually to be alone in that way has been really powerful. People obviously, as we know, are mainly wonderful. They're mainly kind. They're mainly generous. You know, that's how life works. I would say the, 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 the incidents I've had are more, you know, they're, they're, if you run 700 miles, you're going to have a couple of friendly, friendly encounters with dogs. Uh, one Alsatian uh, and one Rottweiler do feature in the stories here, but they, they, uh, they and, love runners. <laughs> yeah. And the Alsatian was the classic, which is don't worry. She's a lot more scared than you are. And I was thinking that's <laughs> not what her face is saying. Uh, and that was fairly lively. I, I, the, the other is I have had look, quite a few incidents in this, this, uh, this challenge, but I, running into a paintball game full on where the owner of the paintball game absolutely told me there was no footpath and I was showing them the bride away going through and I got into one of those classic <laughs> British moments as 50 people in masks and guns uh, were, were looking at me tutting and they actually clapped me <laughs> out when I ran off but um, yeah so I've had a few but it, look it's small and the other thing I should say to this group is of the 747 miles that I recorded there was about five miles of impassable footpath. Yeah, that's pretty flipping amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just could. By the way, I was so frustrated. There's a, there were about five miles, if that, that were impassable. I would say there was about sixty to seventy where you had to do a bit of work and it had clearly not been used on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often dead end paths or I mean, some of the wonders of this map are there's often a path that goes for five hundred meters straight, dead stop dead. And doesn't go anywhere yeah so you think what is the point of that path actually you go down there and there's a footpath sign there's a footpath you run to the end of it and you run back and you think that's rather wonderful wow so so um we talked about getting near the end what what was the feeling like when you did get to the end of that 747 miles did you do you think oh uh, maybe i'll do that all again or do you know what? I'll try something. I'll try. I'll try something different. I'm, I'll, I'll walk it or something. Or, or bicycle yeah, it. Yeah, I think that the the um, a couple of them. Like one is as ever with these things, and people around here will, will recognise it. That when you end something, it's a curiously low key moment, isn't it? So mm. I, I can see the hillside. I look down at it. I said, I got three hundred metres to go. I'm there. I've done it. 
and there was a couple with a pug and I remember it and I said can you take a picture and I said and they said oh, we'll take a picture what is it and I said well I've just run all and they just looked at me like you're imbalanced or you, you've clearly got a screw loose they took a picture of me and I just ran 300 meters down this hill and I went through it in, off the edge of the map and that was it and it didn't there was no difference around me there was this is the wonderful thing about landscape it's the wonderful thing about the natural world it just goes on it doesn't react to the all of our situation so that was just calm I just read it and then I then I had been I mean, we can talk about it in a minute but I had been thinking about where do I go next what what mm. actually hasn't happened is I've kind of thought there hasn't been a thought where I thought I wanted to do another I want to go to three maps away or do I love this area I I, I, I can't I mean this morning I was running it I've run it hundreds of times since even you know in the last couple of years um, and I will just keep going there's no way I'm gonna I don't necessarily need a completely reshaped challenge. I am thinking of something on a UK basis that I'm doing, but that's another story. And what, what I mean, to, to this area, what, what really makes it special for you then, Tim? I mean, the, 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 the fact that you can go five miles and be in your own, what, what is it? I, I, I think the actual landscape itself is quite unique. Um, I, I, I've talked about the, you know, the, the, I, I find the, the there's a, there's, certain qualities that come together in the Chilterns. One is the, the you know the, the obvious but the the contours of the land and the way it works give it incredible beauty and quite quickly yeah you get lost in aspects you, you disappear and it, and it has got incredibly different flavors you can kind of feel there's a there's a particularly particular run I go from Stoner across a couple of valleys and a one moment it feels like you're in Scottish the Scottish Highlands the next you're in a mature beech wood the next year in a kind of different completely different more younger more mixed scrub area so i think it's got real personality in its variety it's a really amazing mm. place like that i do think there's something about the proximity of it to you know big city whether it's red the the the, the, the wilds of reading <laughs> or you know <laughs> london it's it's it, it is quite amazing to have that level of kind of uh and it is quiet and, and reflective time that close the final thing is it is infused with ancient pathways mm -hmm. and really deep you know there are if you run the ridgeway there's that section for as many of them know coming off nuffield where you, you're in you know you, you know you know that that pathway has been walked along for thousands of years you can feel it you can feel the you know we know there's rna settlements we know but i'm not an archaeologist but there's i just feel at times it's the old cliche, but I am going down pathways that really have stretched, that put our own generation in a much more wider setting. And I think that is, it's really precious. The, the, the Chiltern has got an air of that, that I, I've often felt in areas like the Lake District, the enormity of time in the, the rock faces and the, la and the landscape itself. There's a little bit hit more here of the connection with human beings and their tracks over time in some of these pathways that I really think is slightly different. I think I think to, I was going to pick up your second point, which is really about the almost the surprise that you get from walking down an alley in between two houses, you come out onto a landscape and you just go, my goodness me, I'm in the Scottish, as you say, I'm in the Scottish Highlands, or I am in some place that, that you know, as though civilization isn't here at all. And I think that's the, that's the the thing for me, uh, whereas lots of other landscapes, it's, it's very much a gentle progression into that landscape. The Chilterns are, you know, you, you go 100 yards, it's in your face kind of thing. It, exactly it, right. It is, exactly it, it, right. It, it, is a, it is that surprise. Um, there's, there's been a couple of questions in, uh, about sort of dangers and stuff. I mean, sort of people talk about ticks, disease, various other bits and pieces. Does you worry about any of that, Tim? Yeah, not really. I mean, I, no, t no ticks at all um so that's okay i mean i i for what it's worth connecticut was a lot more kind of uh was a lot kind of, uh kind of more manicured but that's where i got lyme disease so i did actually get lyme disease in in connecticut and i wouldn't recommend it it was pretty brutal but um here touch wood and look you've got to be careful that what i mean if, if people are interested in walking and this group i mean protective clothing is important by the way i mean I, there were times when i mean it's comical i remember finding you know there was a bit of plastic, horrible bit of litter. By the way, I picked up one piece of litter every run. 
at least. Which is a nice thing to do on a walk. If you're walking, always pick up one piece of litter. Why wouldn't you? It makes you feel good. Yeah. Mm. So, and there was a really horrible bit of plastic, and I put it in my little rucksack. And of course, I came some nettles. So, I would, it, it's not something I'd like to be filmed, but it was me waddling along with the plastic around my legs. But no, I, I didn't get ill doing it. And I think the health benefits are in a different orbit. So, I wouldn't worry about that. If you are worried about it, then it's just leg protection. It's as simple as mm. that. Um, I, I, I do think that, um, you know, I, I do think there's concerns are particularly, you know, uh, you know, are you, are, are you all right on your own? And I, I think you've just got to be, I mean, I don't need to teach anyone, uh, give anyone lectures on that. I think you have to make a judgment. Obviously, the, at night, being alone in fields is the same anywhere. But I have to say, you know, did, I mean, did, did you generally do it during daylight hours? Was daylight it was hours. it daylight hours? But I, I was I used to love those dusk runs. Do you know what I mean? I mean, really? I love that evening light, really like it. Um, and that just fading. I mean, I've got for the first time in my garden after a decade, the uh, the tawny owl is in the box now, about 100 <laughs> meters from here. So at dusk, I just sit underneath the oak tree and watch. And, and that's the magic hour. So that is a good hour to run. Um, but uh, no, I'd, I'd run any time. Um, I was going to ask you, um, um... I mean, clearly you're using the map, you're, you're using the pathways that are laid out by Ordnance Survey. Were there many times where you go, oh, that's different. That's kind of, you know, that's not how it is. Oh, there's a new path here or something. Did you, did you find not, a lot I of mean, that? This is, this is the amazing thing about the Ordnance Survey map. Probably three or four times. I, I didn't, I mean, I saw a question because I have a quick nose at the question. Is, is, I saw a question about kind of unofficial footpaths. I didn't do yeah. that because otherwise I would have gone, stir crazy i could my, i would have just exploded so 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 it was it was a very fixed challenge which if there was a a bridal way or a footpath um, or a byway uh, very strict rules um i would i had to complete all of those if you went on permissive footpaths that were not marked on the ordnance survey by as an official footpath i didn't do them so to be honest there weren't that many there was a few moments and in terms of finding new footpaths beyond the Ordnance Survey paths, I found two or three, I think. One mm. just outside of Henley, but it was pretty small. Pretty, I mean, that, that, it, it is a hell of a thing, the Ordnance Survey. I mean, you know, it, 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 its accuracy was unnerving. Mm. It, it, it is. It is kind of weird. And the only times you think it's wrong is when actually you're in the wrong place. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> and I, yeah. I've done that a few times. I was I was going to pick up uh, on another question that's been asked, but it, I'm going to slightly change it. You talked about um, much of the running what, uh, is really helpful in terms of mental um, uh, decalming, you know, to, to avoiding stress, etc. But there must be been times where you were, had the ability to then think through problems, challenges at work and various other things, perhaps have some creative thoughts that might have been useful than come on you off the run, et cetera. Were, were, were there times like that? Totally right. I mean, I've got a job that is pretty in the public eye uh, with 20,000 staff, lots of editorial issues. I'm sure you all have views on the BBC. Um, uh, welcome to, so, so this, this device, uh, my phone, is buzzing with emails. Or I mean, literally, it's just, Endless, and I think a lot of modern life, and we see this, you know, I've got three boys uh, from 15 to 21. So, you know, they're obsessed with their screens. Mm. I, I can hardly, in London, I can hardly walk a hundred meters without looking at that device. I'm serious, I, I'm, I've got, you know, you just, it's just endless. It's a treadmill of incessant information, meeting, Zoom. So the, 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 the value of having quiet time, quality mm. time just to disappear, I, I don't have this in front of me. I put it in my little backpack in case a major editorial crisis blows up on the BBC <laughs> um, or, or we have to cover mm. some major national event. But by and large, when I put that in the back of my little rucksack and I run off, I will not touch it for an hour. Um, I am in a different space completely. Now, it's a really interesting question because I think it's so true many of the thoughts I've had in terms of calmly working out a problem or thinking through things absolutely have come from running or time where you're calmly thinking. There's mm. absolutely no doubt about it. And, and it's very, very valuable. And I worry, actually, I think that, that one of the things we've got to do is make sure that, you know, I drag my children out to the country, but I, I kind of have this faith that it's going to seep in 
that over time when they get through this phase in their life they'll go actually i do want to connect with that i want to walk along a path or just quietly think i'm going to use that to pick up another question that's been asked because i mean i think if if i'd been listening to this i would have asked this question almost at the beginning and and did you do any running with other people i mean did you was it all on your own i mean and how did that how did that it was it's a it's interesting isn't it i mean i it's just it was 90x percent on my own 90x percent and i i'm a talker i'm a i'm a i'm someone who is always in meetings chatting so i think it's different different it's horses for courses here isn't it in terms of running or walking can bring companionship group i suspect if i was a different stage in my life i'd want to go running with a group but in my life it was a chance to just disappear from families teenage boys going crazy <laughs> teenage boys big job you know just literally just a, it was my carved out time yeah. and um so yeah i was mainly on my own having said that it's not i, I wasn't mean i didn't ha i wasn't grumpy about that i wasn't having a a, a sulk about it if there are a couple of times when good friends of mine joined me for one of the runs and it was lovely it wasn't a problem put it that way mm. i always think it's really nice i mean w one of the worst feelings is where you come across something that you really want to share but you're on your own and, and and so running on your own i think probably will have those moments where you just have to find a way of internalizing it and then appreciating it for what it is and your experience of it rather than that shared experience but i I think that's true. I think for me personally, some of the most transcendental moments where you really are lost in the landscape, they really come together when you're just mm. alone and there's no one there. And there's, there's a, your sense of, you feel small and you feel set in a bigger landscape. And, you know, I'm doing a lot, there's, there's a lot of writing on this. There's a lot of thinking about this, but actually, Look, I love I love the company. What I tend to do, by the way, is if I find something like the view I talked about, then I want to share it. So yeah. I so when my running group, we can actually do some running together soon. Um, so yeah, when 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 the running group comes together, we'll all trot up to that view and I'll go look. But it will be a different experience. Mm -hmm. It will be a different, it's a, just a slightly different experience in how you think about it because you're sharing it, it's lovely, it's brilliant. But I, there is something about being alone in a landscape. I was going to, I was going to pick up. You talked about memorable moments. Have you got any really stand out? Well, I mean, you talked about a few of these. Uh, any big standout times where you've just thought, "Gosh, that you know," I've, you've come back from the run and thought that was just special today. Um, many, and I think that um, I, I think I mentioned seeing hairs, yeah, and I, there is something mystical about. It's normally been an experience with wildlife like that. I remember, you know, on a holiday once I swam and saw, you know, I saw a manta ray. And there is something amazing about, you know, seeing an animal or seeing something that you haven't seen or very rarely see. And there's just this moment of connection. Mm. And I've, and that is something that you, the thing about it is it's one of those things you can't buy. You, you can't just go and get it. You, you might buy a safari or something, but you, in this landscape, there there are some things that come together that they're they're truly priceless because you can't put like a connection with a kite that gives you a look or something. And there was one experience with the hare. I came into a field and he looked, he or she looked at me and just looked right in the eyes. Like there was a there was two animals looking at each other, and then it's skitter and I was kind of running this side <laughs> and we were skittering on. And there was just look, its experience was totally different to mine. I'm I'm adding things that are completely different to what it was feeling which is probably oh my god let's get out of here but that was a wonder you know I, I i that 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 just was amazing i've had one experience where there was a you know deer normally you see with that by the way deer are very inspirational to a runner the reason is because they're so light on their feet you know when you see a deer i mean i saw the deer, i saw three deer this morning and when i looked up one was in the air and that because they were moving through the woods and they're so light, they're so, that they have this, that spring, that incredible energy and the speed. And by the way, you run better after you've seen deer. That's just a, <laughs> you do run better. 
<laughs> you suddenly you suddenly think right i can run lighter i can spring i can there's just something about that. if you see deer you run faster by the way that's my training tip for the british olympic team they need to watch videos of <laughs> so like get some deer out on the track slightly yeah. strange but yeah but, but but it's that lightness of touch and i've had experiences where i've been running and deer are running beside me do you know like in the, it just and there's this moment you go god that i couldn't i could run a thousand times and never get that again that's what or I had a barn owl just come in front. I mean, I, I've only seen barn owls yeah, I'm, I'm very rarely, so a couple of times in my life. Um, I haven't gone looking for them, but I haven't seen. And one just came over above me about eight foot above my head and just glided off. You know, that to me is, I'm done at that point. I'm, I'm happy. Tim, you talked about one book you've used. I mean, in a, in a way, experiencing a number of things like landscape, animals, um, but, you know, uh, flora and fauna. Uh, uh, you must have done some research when you got home to think, oh, I wonder what that animal was. And, 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 and were, did you use a whole range yeah, of Yeah, my, 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 my problem is I'm pretty weak on trees and pretty weak on flowers. So one of the things you can use, if, if, if people are inspired to choose even a chat so so forget the whole map like like why don't everyone on this call agree they're going to choose 20 walks they haven't done near and just map them out and do them because you what's the downside yeah and then with that by the way you can get a sense of the footpath because this group is probably one that uses the footpaths a lot so just push out have a look and you'll find a different flower or a different tree or something so i wouldn't know what i mean when i started i really wouldn't know a lot of the trees between maple cherry or whatever i wouldn't know that what i do know is if i run out of my house now down this little lane there's about 19 species of tree shrub within about 300 meters yeah so i did i have begun to do that butterflies yet yeah. flowers i'm nowhere so we need a i need a flower i need a, a, a flower guide but yeah um I, I i looked up a few things i remember seeing a cuckoo pint and that got me very excited but uh there, there's a few things there's a there's a few gaps still there i've got to do back to back to i think you started saying about a hint and tip for those people who are listening tonight to, to say how you might start this so as you say, sort of just, are you, are you saying just cross out a set like the, the best way? Would that be your tip to, to go forward, Tim? Well, in terms of, sorry, I missed you a bit. In, in terms, terms of, of the people of ne of stepping into the unknown, as you have done to some extent, in a, in a small way. I mean, I don't expect everybody to do. Um, no, of course you know. not. Of course not. And, and I think um, what I would do is just set yourself up and say, okay, just as I've just said, choose 10. You, most people on this, including myself, have a kind of repeated structure. We, we are creatures of habit. So I would, I would say, look, have a look at the map close by and say, I'm going to do 10, 10 walks that I've just never done before. And you all have them. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, someone asked me the question about car. I mean, the, the downside of this, by the way, that was, I mean, I, this is as guilty as charged. I could not do this from this house because otherwise I'd be doing about, you know, <laughs> 20,000 miles. Yeah. So I did have to, and that is the, that's the, a bit of guilt here, which is that to drive to the location and then run, and then run back to my, do the 10 mile loop or whatever, then get back the car. I tried to minimize it. Um, but I think that's, the, that's in hindsight, that's why I want to stay a bit more local. So in some ways people can wipe out even that footprint by, I think choosing, as I said, why I choose 10, just 10, 10 walks close to you or 10 runs if you're a runner mm. say okay or do 100 miles walk walk 100 new miles you've never walked and it doesn't matter if you do that over two miles over 50 weekends it doesn't matter and just the depth of understanding you'll get for the landscape and i think there's certain things like the picking up of litter or doing things that you can really enrich it you can say look i contributed it's, i think it's really powerful really powerful so, so running with a purpose, um, but I mean, obviously running has its own purpose about keeping fit, but it sounds like there's a whole range of purposes, your litter picking, your um, mental well-being, um, uh, the ability to see landscapes, uh, wildlife, various things. So so actually the, the running was a fantastic means to an end, wasn't it really? Of, of course it was. And I think, I mean, you know, and I think the, the key, the key fit, it's all linked together though, isn't it? I mean, you know, get, having the ability to, you know, walk, be active, get up, and, and so, so you don't have to run a two hour 10 marathon, you know, just being able to be active out there. 
Um, it's all linked together. I mean, it, most things in life are quite compromising. They have a downside. You take on a high stress job like mine. It's not, I mean, I, I'm very proud of it. I love the BBC. I love my job, but there are a few downsides. <laughs> there are, there are a few stress points. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I can't think of a downside on this one. I, I genuinely mm. can't think, I, I can't think why. So it all comes together. And I, I, I think that's, you know, that, that's, that's a really inspiring thing. I think the other thing is, I do think if, 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 and again, it's, this is why I'm so passionate about things like this group is if we can get other people into the landscape, you know, we've got so many issues to deal with people under pressure, lockdown, everything. Look, frankly, there's not a lot that a good walk in the hills doesn't solve. Mm. And actually that's a bit flippant because there are things that are deeper than that. But in general life, you know, if you've got the, I mean, I have to drag some of my, I've, I've been in situations where I've literally had to drag the kids, not quite, but in to go out for a walk. 10 minutes in, they're fine. They're looking at, they're looking at things. They're enjoying the fresh air. They get it. And I think that's what, that's, that's a really good, if you can find a way in giving them a challenge as well, that's another obvious way of working it. How did, I mean, obviously you've got family, you've got friends. Did, do they, how do they view what you've done? I mean, do they sort of go, oh, goodness me, Tim's into his running, that's it, et cetera. Or do they, are they are, you know, or do they sort of think, oh, gosh, I wish I could do that, et cetera, and, you know, ne never uh, get the opportunity. Um, you must have had a number of comments. From do you mean people. colleagues or family? Sorry, I missed the first bit. Well, talk, talk, I mean, say, let's concentrate on family. What, what does your family think? Then they think I'm that they, they they think I'm slightly mad, and they 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 give. I think it's important. You know, now we can get into really interesting territory. But giving people their space, <laughs> you know what I mean. So so my wife and I will go walking. She's a big walker. We'll do stuff. But in some ways, this is, you know, I'm a, I'm full on during the weekend in the family doing stuff. You know, that this is the time when I just I'm yeah. off. I'm disappearing, and 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 I'm not a carp fisherman, so I'm not going to go overnight. It's it, it, the, the thing about a walk or a run, and I'm not judging anyone here, is it's not five hours on a bike or three hours on a, uh, a, a, at a golf course. The other thing that I could do is in my life, which is just more personal, I could, if, if we had a family thing in the morning, I could go in the evening, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very flexible. Yeah, so yeah. that's the wonderful thing about these things. You can just go out there and it's all on your doorstep. I mean, there's something about sort of being, um, um, having something that you do that other people sort of know that that's your thing. I mean, mm. clearly, obviously, it, it was easy to buy you Christmas presents, I suppose, around yeah. <laughs> so running gear and various other things. But, but, but potentially, it, 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 you know, it, it's nice to feel that that is you. That's part of who you are and what makes you tick. Does that, does that make sense? I think that's it. That's absolutely it. It's what you are. And, and this is, and I think the one thing I'd say about committing to something where you spend time doing it uh, is it, it is who you are. It's absolutely who you are. I can't conceive a situation where I wasn't running deep in the landscape in which I lived. I can't say, I mean, I love it. I don't want to move from Chilterns, but you can never say you're never going to move in life. One thing I, do feel is committing to the landscape and where I live it's really important to me yeah and mm. also I think I wouldn't want to live anywhere where I couldn't just escape where escape from situations where humans are most dominant yeah I think yeah. I think it's something profound I mean one of the areas I'm looking at now is a little challenge I've set myself for the long term but it's not um on it's not every weekend this one it's just for a little adventures now and again is areas in the UK Wait for it, everyone, because you can you can you can think about where you would go. But it, areas in the UK where you can draw a straight line for ten miles, and the rules are you can draw the line straight, and it doesn't cross any road or go past any building. So it can't go across tarmac. It's got to be completely wild. Okay, relatively easy in Scotland, relatively difficult in uk i found nowhere nowhere in the southwest i found a couple of lines in the lake district i've already done one and wild camped in the middle of it yeah so that's one of my next challenges is how many places in the uk you can just draw a line where you don't cross there's no sign of human interference for 10 miles there's well i say there might be a roman path but there's no tar tarmac so that, that's your <laughs> challenge um 
I mean, I've got, should I do a couple of other questions, Simon? I can see them here. Yeah, go, uh, yes, should I yeah. go for it. Yeah. So apps, I, 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 lots of people I know use apps, by the way, and they're very good. I've got the ordinance mm. survey map. I didn't use it and I don't root plot. I, I, I'm just so in love with this flipping paper map, but that people swear by the, um, I've got the app. The OS map is very good if you get lost because yes. it, you can just, okay. Now and again, I'd be stuck in a woodland where the path had just disintegrated. I just thought, I, I really need help here. And I'm just being very honest. At that point, my love of the paper map disintegrated. And I just, now sometimes I didn't have a signal, but mainly I'd have a signal and that would put me. So, so and, and the root plotter on OS maps, for all I hear, is excellent. So um, at the BBC, we don't endorse anything, but um, all I hear from someone, it's good. So there you go. Um, the other, someone says, well done. Could we do more, um, someone in my position, um, in terms of picking up litter, there's clearly, clearly, I mean, there's a lot of campaigns. I think we do quite a lot of education. I mean, in that question, it said, I get cross picking up the litter. What I would say is I, I think we need to educate, but actually that positive, just calmly picking it up and showing that is a huge contribution. I mean, I think that kind of not getting cross things quite a good thing, which is no, I just pick it up. And in some ways, I think it can be more effective than getting annoyed with people. It just sends a signal of respect. So I don't, I, I actually found, weirdly, I didn't get cross about it because I found it deeply satisfying. Deep, because I could run along, if you, you again, this group will walk along, you, you get a perfect woodland path with a flipping can of something in it. Taking that can out and just putting it in your side pocket, suddenly happiness. It's, Great. Well, I like the idea of just doing one thing because I remember on lockdown, I went on quite a few walks and I started to take a black bag with me and you sort of fill the black bag. And in the end, you're dragging this black bag along thinking this isn't really an enjoyable walk. So I think one or two things brilliant because actually they're, they are going to make a difference. And if everybody does that. Well, that's the, point, that's the point. I mean, there's a different thing which you guys might be involved in, which is clearing. Yeah. And I wasn't yeah. doing that. But there's something just about also I, I felt that guilt about the car journey there's something about how could you just make sure each of your contribution every time you enter the landscape is there just something you can do that makes it a positive contribution yeah whether it's sorting something just helping someone or tidying a bit of litter uh, I, that has to be rewarding doesn't it i mean why wouldn't you do that you need to take some secateurs and and and, and clear those five miles of un <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Navigated bars, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone said, "Will you? Will we see any any of the wildlife you saw?" Well, yeah. If you do the seven hundred miles, you'll see it all, but uh, or most of it, because it, it does kind of. I, I think it's all out there, to be honest. I mean, what I would say is, if you get the map and you just look for areas that lack human habitation, like look for simply look for areas, and also the other thing I'd say is go beyond the car parks. Please don't. I can tell you as a runner who runs. 12 or 15 mile runs, it, it gets packed around car parks, yeah? So if you got, um, you know, uh, the white mark on Christmas Common, there's a couple of car parks up there, and you go down, it's, it, it, to me, that's Piccadilly Circus, yeah. yeah? If you're a runner, you disappear off. So I would mm -hmm. find little bits to park in, careful where you park and all that, park safely, but I personally am not a fan of that. I think there's areas where you can just disappear quietly into, folds of the landscape. The map has all the clues. You can find little areas where you can park and find quiet areas. I'm not judging too hard because everyone, you know, when the kids go, there's simple routes where you go to the white mark and do it, but I don't want to pick on that. But there's, generally speaking, you can see a lot more, wild, you just see things when it's quiet. I mean, you yeah, don't see a lot of wildlife with other people. So lots of hints and tips for people who, who want to get into this and, and fantastic reasons why. Um, in, in, a, in, a, in a summary, really, just, just talk about uh, the best bits of your experience and what you've taken away from doing these 747 miles and, and the run over those, those two years. Um, the main thing I've taken away is we're really lucky. We're really, really lucky to have the children's here. I mean, I, I, I've been all, I mean, I, I think I've done 70 countries travelled. I've, I've done a lot. I count myself incredibly privileged to have gone around the world, seen incredible landscapes, incredible landscapes. But I've come back here and there's something about this place. And, and, I, and I'm clearly I'm biased because I live here, but that to have that on your doorstep 
and the ability to go out and feel wilderness kind of that that sense of wilderness or at least feeling mm. alone among it so close um without having to get on planes and anything else i i, I think i just i just kind of honestly i think I'm, I'm really lucky really really lucky i think we all are and uh, tim can i just say i think we're really lucky to have you here telling us about your experience over the last hour i mean i'm grateful for all the questions and 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 comments that's come in uh, can I just say thank you so much for your time? I appreciate how busy you are, but uh, but clearly a very inspiring um, experience. And uh, hopefully everyone who has been listening uh, will get out there and enjoy some of this landscape, some see some of this wildlife for themselves uh, and just revel in um, uh, how lucky we all are uh, to, to live. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. It's been lovely not to be quizzed on the Saturday night schedule or how our news is covering the local elections. I didn't see any HS2 stuff. It was a little bit uh, just to that question. It was a bit early before that. So, uh, and as, as you rightly put in your question, I can't get drawn on that one, but it's been an incredible privilege. And, you know, if all of us on this call, we've got a good group here, went out tomorrow, picked up a bit of litter or, and just sort did a few things and pushed out a little bit, it'll be an incredible, it will all have an incredible effect. So I think it's a, a real privilege to do it. Thank you very much. Tim, thank you very much for your time. It's thank you. Absolute thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, can I just say um, the next talk is Russ Carrington, who will be talking about the rewilding project at NEP, which uh, is um, where he is setting up a regenerative farm. And if you don't know what a regenerative farm is, then please tune in next week, uh, Tuesday, uh, six o'clock. Uh, that is the 6th of April. Um, the uh, the uh, the talk is called Food Shopping for Wildlife, and that will be hosted by Tom, our Chief Officer. So please tune in next week. Um, it's been an absolute privilege. And um, uh, uh, today, uh, thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much for everybody else who's tuned in. Thank, thank you. you.